one moment while I sync both cameras. Greetings, unsettled souls! <laughs> Sam I beat again, you here with me. Doing political commentary for the media speaks. I got the low def up there, high def over there. Guys, I am exhausted. It's been a long week. Not particularly a good way. So I guess the word of the day we'll start off with it is exhausted. Uh, if you reply, you'll get a copy of uh, any of the three Dunce Cap awards that you like the most. I will send you a copy of them. Christelle and I will autograph them. Maybe we'll send you bumper stickers or something. Um, word of the day. Exhausted. Put it in the comment line. First one to do it gets it. But you also have to send your address to the correct views at Hotmail.com. All right, friends, I've stalled enough. It's here. It's what you've all been waiting for. It's the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. When we bring out the absolute dumbest, stupidest people who you have ever seen in your life, and we make a show out of them. And it's all real, and uh, at the end of it, somebody is going to be getting a Dunce Cap. Now, guys, th this doesn't even sound kinky. This just sounds painful. How many of you have seen these stupid little spinner fidget thingies that everyone has? Now, see... I'm one of those people that are very leery of anything that comes in uh, into fashion overnight. It's usually a bad sign. It's normally not going in the direction you want it to. Well, how about if you got a fidget spinner stuck in your vagina? No, I'm not kidding. We will go to it. I told you it's the Dots Cap of the Month show. Uh, Week and Herald Edmonton woman requires surgery. After fidget spinner became lodged in Virginia. Yep. Ah, the 24-year-old woman from Edmonton in Canada's Alberta province has been rushed to the hospital after a fidget spinner became stuck inside her vagina. Yeah, it just became stuck there. She didn't put it there, but it, it, it must have leapt in. We all know that they, they tend to do that. You leave them on the table, and the next thing you know, they just spring like a panther. I guess you got to watch them, friends. you got to watch them. Um, surgeons were forced to operate on the woman to remove the device, which had become stuck after she'd used it in an attempt to pleasure herself. We are confident the woman will make a, the woman will make a full recovery, but for the moment, she does face a fairly long recovery due to the internal damage the device made, said one of the doctors who operated on the woman. According to local media reports, the woman had been introduced to fidget spinners by one of her younger cousins and had been playing with the device while in bed when the accident occurred. Yeah, playing. The family member who spoke to the media declined to be named or to name the woman involved in the incident, but it did answer some que but did answer some questions about what caused the spinner to become stuck. I wish I had a name. I so would have sent them a dunce cap. Then again, they're in Canada, so I don't usually do other countries. She's quite embarrassed by it all, as you can imagine, particularly uh, the media attention, said the woman's relative. She was at the playing with the toy in her bed, and for some reason it struck her that it might be a fun way to see if she could use it to pleasure herself in hindsight. Right, she didn't do it in hind. And it was a pretty stupid thing to do, so she tried spinning it near her vagina to see if it felt good. According to the relative, it did feel good. Yeah, at first. After she tried, she thought that she might try and insert part of the spinner into, it says into his vagina, it's a typo, but somehow she went too far. What happened next required the woman to be rushed to the emergency room, probably in her fallopian tube, by her neighbors who heard her cries for help in the bedroom. I just heard this God Almighty screaming come from the house, so we rushed over and banged on the door, said the 54-year-old's neighbor. She let us in, clutching her 54-year-old neighbor, clutching her mid-regions. I asked her what's wrong, and she choked out that she needed an ambulance. Medical experts have urged the public to take care when playing with fidget spinners and to not to use them for unintended purposes. There's a time and a place for these toys, but they should never be used for sexual conduct. Now, see, the fact that you even need to mention this, you automatically know that you must be in one place and one place only, and that is when the correct views, and that would be this show, 
does the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And uh, we still have a couple more stories to get to before we get to our winner. I need to know which one you guys like the best here. Um, Newsinenglish.no. I never heard of them before. A group to re-erect Trollapiken. Now, I get it. It's funny. It's, it's a rock protrusion that looks like a penis. With people starving in the world and, you know, everything going on, they have decided that because somebody broke the penis-looking rock, that they were going to head and spend actual money to get it reattached. The rock is going to get a reattedectomy. Um, an appalled but enthusiastic group of activists determined that their local landmark, a stone formation called Trollpiken, that resembled an erect penis. You can see it right there. And for those of you on low def, it's already on. It was cut off over the weekend, with the culprits facing six years in prison for environmental vandalism, if caught. Reaction has been swift after the group of joggers found the tourist attraction in Eigensold, south of Stavander, badly damaged on Saturday morning. Kilajiftil Benston, who's been leading the effort to make Trollpiken a more populous tour attraction in the hills because nothing beats a rock-hard rock, most tourist attractions in the hills of Norway's northwest coast told local newspaper De La Nintendende that someone drilled holes into the base and cut off the whole formation. Hee <laughs> Remnants included metal bolts that were found at the site, while Benston said that there were signs that, that clearly show how someone wanted to destroy Trollpiken. Its name has been roughly translated into the Trollcock. This is terribly sad, and I'm appalled that someone could do something like that. Both the chief and the uh, regional tourism, tourism promotion organization, Destination Stavanger, and local police have been working to attract more attention to the spot and a competition with other unusual rock formations. So police are now launching an investigation. This is what your, their tax dollars are going for there. And you thought Varg Vikranis was weird. Our uh, launching an investigation confirmed Magnar Strandsaw, acting chief of the Eigersund Police Station, Torhel Jastavik of Sorpest Police District, covers the entire Southwest region. So they're looking for it everywhere. Meanwhile, they're, they've got an actual GoFundMe page. For, it's, it's not GoFundMe, you know what I mean. It's a different, uh, different company. But they're actually trying to pay money to get the penis reattached, friends. And that is only two stories away from the dumbest. Okay? You've got two, then you've got your dumbdy. So I guess, uh, you know, I guess you could say you have three. Um, guys, do me a favor. Make sure you remember, before I go into my last three, actually, the Seacrest Motel. If you go to Cedar Point, how many of you are going? It's the roller coaster capital of the world. <clears throat> They ruined the stand-up roller coaster there. So my wife and I, we rode the Mantis. It was uh, the Rougarou. It was all right. It holds its speed better at the end, but they still ruined the coaster. Anyway, if you're going to go and ride the coaster, and you're going to see if you like the Rougarou or not, you're going to need some place to stay. Go ahead and stay at the Seacrest Motel and save a fortune. And do you want to save even more? Tell Vicky that you heard of, or her son, that you heard about the Seacrest Motel from Sam from The Correct Views. And I guarantee you're going to save even more money because you heard about it from us, friends. Check this out. New York Post. Woman munches on random diner's arm at a steakhouse. Now, this isn't... This isn't as unusual as you would think, I guess. Um, what? The steak wasn't good enough. A woman eating lunch at Peter Luger's Steakhouse in Brooklyn took a bite out of another diner's arm Sunday, cops say. The incident unfolded around 14... 4.10 p.m. inside the South Williamsburg scale staple as stunned patrons were chowing down on succulent cuts of famous sauce, according to police. <sighs> oh, I don't want to hear any music. After biting the 50-year-old woman, the hungry suspect fled the restaurant and first responders treated the victim at the scene. Police said the attack appeared to be unprovoked and no arrests have been made. They have absolutely no idea who it is, so I couldn't send them the Dunce Cap of the Month award because clearly... We don't know who they are, but I guarantee if you're if you're somewhere and you're enjoying a good steak and someone's looking at you like, <laughs> you might want to you might want to go ahead and uh, 
make sure you got some kind of protection there on the arm, a little bit of bracelet or something. Just saying. All right, friends, I uh, got two left. Man walking on turnpike offered a ride by the cops. Instead, he gets arrested. Why? You'll love this, friends. Dunce camp of the month. Robbinsville, a man walking along the New Jersey Turnpike Tuesday was found with a stolen gun after being offered a ride by state police, authorities said. The trooper arrested Jose Santiago Barrios, 30, of Philadelphia after seeing him along the side of the southbound lanes in Robbinsville at about 4.15. So, he didn't even have enough sense not to take the ride. The turnpike is a limited access road, meaning pedestrians are not permitted and troopers are supposed to give a lift to anyone walking. I've broken down on them. They're a pain. Before letting Santiago Barreras in a patrol car, the trooper frisked him and found a semi-automatic gun and hollow-point bullets. Police, uh, state police said the trooper later learned the gun was stolen and Santiago Barreras had a warrant out for his arrest. Now, I'm for the Second Amendment, but not with stolen guns. Uh, he was charged with unlawful possession of a weapon, possession of a weapon for an unlawful purpose, possession of hollow point and bullets, and receiving stolen property following his arrest at mile post 64.5. Alright guys, and that brings us to the dumb day of the day, which is today, the dunce cap of the month. Oh my god, and it is dumb, guys. Wait, you have no idea. Everyone knows by now that global warming is the most disproven pile of malarkey that has ever posed a science. Look up the planet hasn't warmed up in 19 years. There's all kind of data that'll show it to you. You have the global warming crowd out there telling you <clears throat> that there's less ice than ever. And yet ice ships are getting stuck because the reality is that there's more ice than ever. Look up global warming on Teddy Stick. Type in global warming Samuel DeGangi, D-I-G-A-N-G-I. -I. It'll come right up. You'll see all the, the work I've done. The, I, I list everything. I source everything. It's not fake news. It's very real news, as a matter of fact. Mad-made global warming is a lie. What they want is to get into your pocket and take money out of it. For any little thing they can. Driving your car. Heating your house. How many people listening to this in the winter are afraid to crank the heat up a little bit, even if they're freezing because of how much it costs? Well, a lot of that's tied into global warming, which isn't even happening. And yet Al Gore manages to come out here as if it really matters. So, friends, he wins the Dunce Cap of the Month award. And uh, he's going to be getting a cap and everything. Let me show you at least what he did, though, before we get into it. <clears throat> and I will show everything that he's getting. Former Vice President, who I'm going to pause this because Fox is going to play a video, Al Gore, a champion of environmental issues, on Sunday blasted President Trump's decision to withdraw the United States from the 2017 Paris Climate Agreement, saying it was reckless and indefensible. It makes no sense to me, Gore said on Fox News Sunday. I think that it was a reckless decision, an indefensible decision. All right, look, here's what an indefensible decision really is, Mr. Gore. An indefensible decision is when you deliberately pick our pockets for a known lie and continue to chastise the man <clears throat> who is taking back our economic progress from the hands of people that are holding it back. How many of you have heard about what it is that uh, they're trying to cut down in California, the amount of uh, carbon dioxide in there? Do you know it'll make less than one percentage point of total global warming analysis? All the, glow, all, all the carbon's mostly coming from India <clears throat> and China anyway. So they, they live in this world, you see, where if America burns carbon any carbon, it warms the planet. So what do we do? We buy our energy needs from Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, places that want to kill us. Well, they're producing energy, right? So does the planet only warm, Mr. Gore, when, they're, when we're producing energy and not them because we're buying it from them and they're producing it, so why can't we be producing it ourselves? That's why you win the dumb deal of the day. I'm sorry, you're a stupid ass. You really are. Trump, citing economic reasons, decided last week not to join six other industrial nations and reaffirming the nation's commitment to the accord. 
Thank God. Which was an effort to curb global warming, which isn't happening, by reducing greenhouse gases and their air pollutants. I can prove it's not happening. Look up Climate Gate. Look up Lord Mockton. I'm, I'm giving you where to go. Uh, Gore talked in person to Trump after he won the 2016 presidential election, and Sunday said the substance of their conversation will remain confidential. But he made it clear that he tried to convince Trump to stay on the Paris Accord. In other words, he tried to make it clear to keep stealing from the average person listening to this for no reason. I did my best to persuade him, and it was the country's best interest, said the snore gore, whose 2006 mockumentary, it's actually a documentary, but not really, it's, there's no facts in it, an inconvenient truth, warns about the dangers of global warming. Keep in mind what he predicted would happen never did. I think it undermines our nation standing in the world and isolates us and threatens to harm humanity's ability to solve a crisis. First of all, there's no crisis. Second of all, if they're swayed by the fact that we're not paying a ridiculous tax, if that's the great threat to world peace, if we don't have to worry about North Korea or China or ISIS or any, no dayish nothing, no, well, hell, it's just global warming, man. What an idiot. Thank God he didn't become president. We're the United States. We always have a seat at the table, EPA Administrator Scott Pruitt said. Now look, that is why he has won the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And I'm going to show you what he's won and uh, as well as uh, what I'm sending him. First of all, his certificate. Now, you're going to get one of these certificates. I'm going to, get, I'm going to print a different one out. I'm going to autograph it, send it to you. I'll send you some bumper stickers. Word of the day is exhausted. The Dunce Cap, a first person to say it, the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. This Dunce Cap of the Month Award is for Al Gore, who thinks that anyone still buys his lie about global warming, and the, about man warming the planet, excuse me. Hey, dolt, I wrote. We know what you are, we know that you are lying, a lying shell, I can't read today, that you are a lying shell, and that you would have made the worst American leader in U.S. history if you had won you are a liar, and there is no global warming. You do not get to pick our pockets, but you do get to win the Dunce Cap of the Month Award for thinking that anyone believes your garbage. Uh, they put the website address at the bottom. And last but not least, the cat he's going to get. Yes, here it is. It's not trimmed yet. She'll trim it. Uh, there is a boat. You can see my wait, you can see my boat that is stuck in the ice, and it says, Yes, sir. We see, with a radio transmission, yes, we seem to be stuck in the ice that the dunce Al Gore said would not be there. S.O.S. S.O.S. And then, we have a polar bear. And it says, hey Al, you are a dumbass. I can swim. Because how many of you remember, I'm pointing at you with the dunce cap, that's great. How many of you remember that he said the polar bears couldn't swim? And of course here, Al Gore is a dunce, and there is his rainbow dunce, because we all know rainbows make people on the left happy. I will be trimming, or Costello will be trimming it, we'll be sending it to Al Gore, friends, and that's the dunce count of the month award. And you know what? All of that costs money. I mean, all of it does. The sending of it, the buying of the computer, the lights that are in the studio, everything, and you can donate to keep this show going. How do you do that? The correct views of Hotmail.com, you do donate through PayPal. Thank you, friends, for listening. That's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. There will be one next month. It's way back this month. I normally do it at the beginning. The 4th of July holiday messed it up, and I just never got caught up again. But, hey, it happened, and uh, we'll kick it in earlier next month. Good night, friends. God bless.